All right, who want to read that? Here's the. Uh, Deacon Jackson. The first seven verses of chapter 26. Praise the Lord. Moreover, thou shalt make the tabernacle with ten curtains of fine twine linen, and blue, and purple, and scarlet, with cherubims of cunning work shalt thou make them. The length of one curtain shall be eight and twenty cubits, and the breadth of one curtain four cubits, and every one of the curtains shall have one measure. The five curtains shall be coupled together one to another, and other five curtains shall be coupled one to another. And thou shalt make loops of blue upon the edge of one curtain from the shelvage in the coupling, and likewise shalt thou make in the uttermost edge of another curtain in the coupling of the second. Fifty loops shalt thou make in one curtain, and fifty loops shalt thou make in the edge of the curtain that is in the coupling of the second, that the loops may take hold one of another. And thou shalt make fifty tatches of gold, and couple the curtains together with the tatches, and it shall be one tabernacle. And thou shalt make curtains of goat's hair to be covered upon the tabernacle, eleven curtains shall thou make. All right. Now, let's look at these verses. Verse 1 says, Moreover, thou shalt make uh, the tabernacle with ten curtains of fine twine linen and blue, purple, scarlet, with cherubims of cunning work shall thou make them. All right. Now, here's the record. Remember in the 25th chapter, uh, he said, make sure that everything is made according to the pattern. Yes. Y'all remember that? Everything according to the pattern that he had given Moses when he was in the mountain. So uh, last week we gave you a handout, and we told you uh, on, the, on the handout, how many of you still remember what linen is? What do linen represent? Purity. What do linen represent? Well, purity. Yeah, I know, but that's why I asked it again. <laughs> Righteousness. Righteousness, okay, that is purity, but righteousness is what linen. So when you look at the white all the way around there, it says that inside and outside of this place is what? Righteousness, is righteousness. So the first thing he said, uh, make the tabernacle with the ten curtains of fine twine linen and blue. Now what did we tell you that blue was? Not blue. Righteousness. Did y'all forget already? No, white, I mean, okay, white was righteousness, and blue was a heavenly color. So when we talk about the blue, uh, that represents John, it's the heavenly man. The heavenly man. So he said, make, make it a blue. And then purple is what? That's royalty, and that's Matthew's. Matthews come presented him as the son of David, and David was what? King. So that's, that is the royalty. So he said, make it up, ten curtains, fine linen, which is righteous, and then blue, heavenly, purple is royalty, and scarlet is what? Blood. But scarlet also represents what? It represents the, it's a substitute for the blood of Jesus. And that is the book of St. John. John came and represented Christ as the son of man, as a servant, which was, he humbled himself and became a servant, and he shed his blood. So he put all of this in the works of these curtains. Then he said the length of one curtain shall be eight and 20 cubits. So how many, how many what, what is a cubit? A cubit is what? 18 inches, so how long was the uh, curtains? Seven, 
So 28 cubits equals 504 inches, 42 feet high. And it was what? How many wide? He said to be one, how the width of it would be what? Four cubits, so four times 18 is what? 72. Divided by 12 is what? Six. So the curtain was six feet wide. Six feet wide, 46 inches high. I, mean, I said 46? Uh, no, it was, it was uh, 42 feet high. 42 feet high. And four feet, six feet wide. Now, that's a, that's, that's a lot of width. No, you can't, it, it, you can't stretch your arm out six feet unless you're really tall. So that's what, and, and, and the measurement. Now, he said, I want 10 of them, 10. What is 10? 10 commandments, what he gave Moses, 10% is our tithe, and it's the redemptive portion. And he said, I want them the same height, the same length, everything was the same. The length of the curtain shall be 80 and 20 cubits, and the breadth of the curtain, uh, four cubits, and every one of the curtains shall have one measurement. So they can't have one up, one down. Everything had to be the same. Now, do you notice that God don't have no, no one person doing this and another person, when I say one person can get by with this sin and the next person have to honor this sin? No, it's sin. It's the same. The letter never changed. All right? The five curtains, verse 3, the five curtains shall be coupled together to another, and the other five curtains shall be coupled one to another. So what he said, on one side, five of them will be together. And the other side, five will be together. So they could open, only open them up, and go in. Now watch, watch what else he do as he build, doing these curtains. Verse 4, and thou shalt make loops of blue upon the edge. And the one curtain from the sledge, and that's the bottom, and the coupling, and the coupling, and likewise that thou shalt make in the uttermost edge of another curtain in the coupling of the second. So what he said, you make the loops, and they join together at the bottom, and they're going to join together at the top. Now, here's, here's how the coupling was made. So they were joined together. He told them to leave so they could slide in. So each one would be looped around the other. They would not be independent. So in the church, a lot of times people want to be the Lone Ranger. But we ought to be joined together. No, we ought to be joined together. If you look at your, if you look at your picture if you're close enough, you should see that they are joined together. There's no, there's no well, maybe this didn't give the <clears throat> closer picture. But later on, you'll be able to see that they were joined together. Now, 50 loops thou shalt make in the uh, one certain, and 50 loops which shall be made in the edge of the curtains. That is, in the coupling of the second, that the lob may take what? Take hold one of another. Remember I told you that? They take hold one of another. Now, what do the number 50 mean? Jubilee, which is what? Pentecost. Pentecost. So now what I want you all to see, everything that was there represented. It was not just something they throwed up and draw and threw, threw up, threw together. Fifty was Pentecost. And they, everything had to hold together. They had to be together. So when the church is together, you can't do me in without doing everybody else in. Y'all understand that? So that's what the, the, the tabernacle was telling us. This is what is going on. Then verse number six, and thou shalt take, make 50 uh, tackle, tatches of gold and couple the curtain together with the tassels and it shall be one what? One tabernacle. And what is gold? <coughs> Deity. Deity. So now we know that God is what? One. He's not separated. He is one. All right, very good. Now, verse 7. And thou shalt 
make curtains of goat hair to be covering upon the tabernacle eleven curtain that thou shalt make. Now, why would you make eleven curtains of goat hair? What did I tell you that goat hair represented? Remember last week we got I gave you the book. Goat hair represent what? It's a sin offering. Why would he make eleven goat hair skins? What is eleven? It's uneven government. Remember that when Jesus had the twelve disciples and Judah sinned and killed himself, it was uneven. They had to get twelve. So the goat then, rather they had eleven representing the sin, the scapegoat. Yeah, you're getting smart. Isn't that? That's right. Praise God. Give him a hand. Oh, woo, woo. <laughs> yeah, the scapegoat. And the scapegoat was the goat that they would use uh, to sacrifice. And they would kill one goat and then sprinkle the blood on the other one and they would send them out. So then they had nine. And then it's what? They had to go back and get another one because it's the time of birth. Nine is the number of birth. And so that's what he did. And these was represented in these first seven verses verses all right verse 8 through 12 who want to read it 8 through 12 the length of one curtain shall no. be 30 cubits. give her the microphone verse 8 the length of one curtain shall be 30 cubits and the breadth of one curtain, four cubits, and the eleven curtains shall be all of one measure. And thou shalt couple five curtains by themselves, and six curtains by themselves, and shall double the sixth curtain in the forefront of the tabernacle. And thou shalt make fifty loops on the edge of the one curtain that is outmost in the coupling and 50 loops in the edge of the curtain which coupled the second. And thou shalt make 50 tatches of brass and put the tatches into the loops and couple the tent together that, there, that it may be one. Verse 12. Okay. And the remnant that remaineth of the curtains of the tent the half curtain that remaineth shall hang over the backside of the tabernacle. All right. Now, do you see it? The ten going to be together. That's the redemptive portion. It's going to be together. So let's just just go. Let's take a look at verse uh, eight. The length of the curtain shall be thirty cubits, and the breadth of the curtain should be four cubits. So now, how long is this? How many? The, the, so thirty times eighteen is what? 30 times 18 is 40, uh, is uh, 300, is 540. 540 inches divided by 12 give you uh, 45 feet. 45 feet. So now the goat hair is 45 feet, whereas that the measurement of the curtains was what? 42 feet. So it is three feet more than the other because the goat hair was going to be one of the things starting the covering of the tabernacle. So these curtains, they were so long, it wasn't that they was hanging just down. But if you look at it, uh, the curtains came from here. They got this open, but they came from here all the way open. They covered the whole thing. And so that's why the goat hair was going to be one of them on the outside. So it had to be longer than the uh, the linen, the blue, the scarlet, and the purple. Got it? So the goat hair is redemption. So the, if you are going to be covered in the old covenant, in the old testament, when you were covered, shouldn't you be completely covered? Boy, God is so smart. So that that was the lint. Verse nine, and thou shalt couple five curtains by themselves and six curtain by themselves and thou shalt double the sixty the sixty curtains 
in front, the six curtains in front of the tabernacle. Six is what? Six is man, the number for man. Now, so the, you notice that the goat hair, yet man had to be covered before. If you look at this, man is covered. And then the goat hair is covering him. Now the, it's also covering all the other stuff. It's covering the purple. It's covering the blue. It's covering the linen. And it's covering the scarlet. All right, so it's going to be, and thou shalt couple the five curtains, uh, themselves and six curtain by themselves and shall double the six curtain in front of the tabernacle. So in front and in the back. Now watch this. If you look at this, the, the goat hair came all the way over. The curtain was in, you, you, would, you wouldn't see from the outside, you would not see the blue, you wouldn't see the gold, you wouldn't see the purple. Where the man entered in, you didn't see it. It was inside and out because God covered the whole thing, the whole thing. All right, now, look at, look at, look at this here, verse 10. And thou shalt make 50 loops on the edge of the one curtain. This is the outermost in the couple, and 50 loops of the edge of the curtain, which comments what? Which couples the second. And thou shalt make 50 tackles of what? What is brass? Judgment. 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 Ju judgment. All right. What is goat hair? All right. Is this is now is this coming real to you to see what Jesus is doing? How that all of this represents, and basic people don't even read about tabernacle. They say, well, that was just something he did. Don't have it. If, if from his forth, all through the Bible, when you see tabernacle, I mean, when you read any scripture, basically in that book, you're gonna see about tabernacle. You see where that, that the typo. If if you go if you want to understand the Old Testament, it is revealed in the New. If you want to understand the New Testament, it is contained in the Old. And so what we're looking at is a typo. And think about this. This whole church that God built in the wilderness and call it a tent. This whole thing represented Jesus. It represented Jesus. You, you see on the outside here, you see that? You probably didn't even notice that this is all what? Got this badger skin. Uh, that, is the, that is the badger skin. All right, now, verse 12. And the remnant, and the remnant that remaineth of the curtain of the tent, the half curtain that remaineth shall hang over the backside of the tabernacle. So don't worry about the part that is the, 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 the other curtain. It's going over the back. So they will not be able to see in. That's why his 45 feet, and it's the same width. And the width was six feet. All right, let's get verses 13 through verse 18. And a cubit on the one side, and a cubit on the other side, of that which remaineth in the length of the curtains of the tent, it shall hang over the sides of the tabernacle on this side and on that side to cover it. And thou shalt make a covering for the tent of ram skins dyed red and a covering above of badger skin. And thou shalt make boards for the tabernacle of shittim wood standing up. 10 cubits shall be the length of a board and a cubit and a half shall be the breadth of one board. Two tenons shall there be in one board, set in order one against another. Thus shalt thou make for all the boards of the tabernacle. And thou shalt make the boards for the tabernacle, twenty boards on the south side, southward. Okay, now, I want you to note something here. The cubit of the one side, this is verse 13, a cubit on the other side. That which remaineth in the length of the curtains, the tent, it shall hang over the side of the tabernacle on this side and on that side to 
to cover it. And thou shalt make a covering for the tent, a ram skin dyed red, and cover above a badger skin. Now, what do you find is missing with the ram skin and badger skin? Ladies and gentlemen, what do you find missing? There is no measurement. Remember everything else had a measurement? There is no measurement for the badger skin and for uh, the ram skin dyed red because they both represent the redemption. The redemption. And so in redeeming us, God have no measurements. Whatever it takes to get us, so he can't have to, I'm going to redeem this person this way. Or this one another way. No, he didn't put no measurement to that, no lint to that. So that this was the the the, the badger can they could see it. They could see the only thing that the, the, the peoples in the world could see, they could see the badger skin. And if they if it, when they was lifting it off, they could see the ram skin dyed red. That was the blood. That represented Christ's blood. And the badger skin was, and it was the, what was the covering. And so the badger skin covered everything because the badger skin was like a, a, a uh, what I want, a beaver. You know, a beaver can be in the water and the water doesn't soak in. And so he'd covered the tabernacle so it never did get wet. There was never no wet, wetness in that because the badger skin took it off. And then under that was the blood for the redemption. And under that was the goat skin. And where do we say the goat skin was for? sin offering then you had your blue you had your purple you had your red scarlet and you had the royal so royalty was the first curtain oh see the first thing you see what what there's more purple than anything you see right if y'all looking at your paper it's more purple than anything you see and the royalty that's jesus and then the next thing you see that, that it stands out more than anything else is the little gold thing you're looking at is the cherubims and, the, and that is the cherubims is on top and that's the mercy seat. They are covering the mercy seat. What did I tell you all last week that was here? Mercy seat was what? Boy, y'all forgot that already? Am I just talking? Anybody remember what I said the mercy seat was? All right, when you look up here, and you see the fire coming from here. And you see the cherubims that are covering it. I told you the mercy seat was a lid. It was not a physical chair. It was a lid. And the angels were looking down. Actually, the cherubim is not angels. You cannot say we do identify them with angels. They are not. They are beings that God used to guard holy things. They are not associated with the angels. They don't take any message. Remember when God put Adam and Eve out of the garden? What did he do? He put cherubims there. So they're not associated with angels that bring messages and fight and so on. They guard holy things. They are, they are, we say that they are angelical, but they actually, are, what are the definition of cherubim is that they guard holy things. They are God beings that guard holy things. But most of the time we make said the angel, the cherubims, and we say they are angels. But the serpents are angels. All right? So, the mercy seat is not a physical chair. It is the lid that covered the box that had the Ark of the Covenant, the bread, the mantle, the manna, and it had Aaron's rod and the Ten Commandments. And now, you couldn't just walk in because it's the holies of holies. The only somebody could go to the mercy seat was Moses, Aaron, and the high priest. And Moses, Aaron was the high priest. And they could only come when God summoned them. And they came in and they would sprinkle oil on the mercy seat for God to give the children of Israel mercy. Mercy was what they did not deserve. Grace was unmerited. But when they had sinned and they did not deserve grace, mercy stepped in. So mercy said, help them even though they don't deserve it. Grace said, I'll do, give you the favors simply because I'm God. Because I'm God. 
so nobody can question him about who he show favor to so make a covering for the tent of ram skin dyed red and of a uh, covering above the badger skin and thou shalt make boards for the tabernacle of shittim wood now shittim wood is acacia wood so help me say acacia wood okay standing up 10 cubits so that's a what 10 times 18 15 feet 15 feet 15 feet board what is 15 <laughs> one is what five grace God and grace I told you God don't count numbers he make numbers count God's grace Whew. and thou shalt make the boards for the tabernacle 20 boards of the south side and before we get to the other now why would he make the 20 what is 20 come on I know you know what 20 is expectation, expectation. he's going to do it all the way around we just, that's the, we just got that one verse <laughs> okay matter of fact you can read verses 20 through 25 <laughs> 19 through 20 and thou shalt make 40 sockets of silver under the 20 boards, two sockets, and under one board for his two tenuous, tenons, tenons, and two sockets under another board for the two tenons. And for the second side of the tabernacle on the north side, there shall be 20 boards. And there are 40 sockets of silver, two sockets under one board, and two under the other another board 22 and for the sides of the tabernacle westward thou shalt make six boards and two of the boards shalt thou make for the corners of the tabernacle in the two sides and they shall be coupled together beneath and they shall be coupled together above the head of it unto one ring thus shall it be for them both they shall be for two corners 25 and they shall be eight boards and their sockets of silver 16 sockets two sockets under one board and two sockets under another board okay now you now you the first time you see civil civil is what it's what redemption redempted Remember, Judah brought back, they bought him for 30 pieces of silver. And a slave was 30, that was the money for a slave, 30 pieces to redeem a slave. And so he, uh, silver is redemptive. So the board, 20 is expectation. And so note that the corner had to be joined together. That was the four. They had to be joined together. But the 20 was on both sides standing up. And the others, 20, was there standing up. If you look at it, see, there's nothing on 20 here, 20 there, and this would be 20 here, and these would be where he put the four to join together. Everything that God did was joined together. So everything in the church should be together. So that's shittim wood around there, or acacia wood. Acacia wood around there. But you don't see the wood because the wood is covered by what? by all the other, the wood on the side is covered by the goat hair and the ram hair because they covered everything. At the top, now. Why the, does it look white then? This is the linen here. Oh, that's, the linen. that's the linen. Okay, you look at that, there's your badger. And at the top, if you look at this at the, on the outside, you see that's, that's the badger. If, because it's got, see what this said, tabernacle cut away. So you can look inside. Any questions thus far? Everybody got it? 
Let me see the hands of you that are ready to teach it right now. <laughs> All righty. Verse 26 through 31. Verse 26, and thou shalt make bars of shittim wood five for the boards of the one side of the tabernacle and five bars for the boards of the other side of the tabernacle and five bars for the boards of the side of the tabernacle for the two sides westward and the middle bar in the midst of the boards shall reach from from end to end. Okay, now, why are you saying that? So I want to make you know, know what he's saying. If you got five bars and told you the length of those, the five bars, same length, the boards on one side and five on the other. So we know then that the width then of the tabernacle the 20 feet wide on both sides. So that means that the five was 10, 10 each with the opening of the door. So 10 is a redemptive portion, 20 is expectation, and then notice what it says here, and the five bars, what is five? Grace, 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 grace. on the westward. And the middle bar in the midst of the board shall reach from end to end. All right, go ahead. And thou, <clears throat> and thou shalt overlay the boards with gold and make their rings of gold for places for the bars and thou shalt overlay the bars with gold and thou shalt rear up the tabernacle according to the, the fashion thereof which was shewed through thee in the mount. Which was shown him when he was in the mountain. God told him that. I showed you what to do in the mountain. All right. Did I tell you to read verse, the first what? 31. Read verse 31. That's a key verse. And thou shalt make a veil of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twined linen of cunning work with cherubims shall it be made. Okay, you note that this is the portion of it. You see the cherubims there? You see the purple here, 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 here? Okay, the wood is what, here's the five here. You see what, that's holding that on this side? Everybody, can everybody see where I'm pointing? No. Okay, they have it. Look at, your, look at your thing at the top, but I'm just trying to point it so you can see it in the top. Okay, right here, you, the curtains are coming down, but the board will go all the way over. All of these boards, the wood that is holding this up, you, you see it in your hand, they are under there, they are covered with gold. They are covered with gold. And gold is what? Deity. Deity. And even the tassel that holds them up is gold. Yes? So, you said a word, and, it, and I'm glad you said it, because I ain't heard nothing about it. Is the, uh, is the curtain and the veil used synonymous? Same thing. That's okay. what the veil was. All right, I'm good. Yeah. The veil was the curtain. Yeah, right. That's what I thought. But I just and sure. everybody, we'll get to this whole a little later, but everybody out here couldn't go. They couldn't see nothing. They couldn't go behind the veil. And this is what, when you said David, when they moved the tabernacle, it was stolen. Philistine. Philistine stole it. And when David got it back, the veil was not there, and all of the things was there. But what David had to find out, that the only way he could approach the veil, I mean the, tab the, 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 the covenant, the tabernacle, with all of the candlestick, and they had it on a wagon, it was never to be moved by a wagon. But he found out if he would praise God, he could approach him and wouldn't die. And so David, once they put it in Mount uh, Sinai, not, I believe it was Mount Moriah, when they put it there, David hired songsters to sing 24-7. And that's why they didn't die. It come, come before me with what? 
Thanksgiving, yes. Right. Yeah. Well, that would be. Yeah. Thank you so much. That would be this right here. Yes. This. That's what. Yeah. That'll be that. Yes. You're right. All right. Now. So, but all of these boards was Kate Acacia wood covered with pure gold. Remember what I told you all that wood represent man, and gold represent deity of God. So, in the old covenant, God did what? He covered man. In the New Testament, he's man what? Man covers, man, God is inside of us. He's a spirit, and he lives inside of us. So, it said, thou should rear up the tabernacle according to the fashion thereof, which was showed thee in the mount. And thou should make a veil of blue, purple, and scarlet, and fine twine linen, of cunning work. Now, this word cunning work is what we call uh, uh, weaving, uh, craft, crafting. Uh, now, what is it when people put draw, knit in? Knitting, but it's not. Em, there you go. That's the word I was looking for. I knew it was some smart folks in here. Yeah, ambrosia. Okay. In, embroidery. Oh, she said embroidery. You said embroidery. Embroidery. <clears throat> embroidery. <laughs> anyway, that's what it was. These are people that can knit designs, follow the pattern. So they had to knit in with gold. Gold. They had to knit in the cherubim. They had to make sure they knitted in the purpose, uh, the purple. And if you look up here, you see writings. Knitted in. What do you think the writing was that were knitted in? The Ten Commandments. Okay, I got two on the both side. They no, both are the same. All right. <clears throat> I got to get my laser light now. Beep. Wait a second. When you look at this. You see the embroidery of the, you see what I'm talking about? If you look at your paper and you see the little gold there? Okay, those are the cherubims. They was knitted in. Then to see the little, you see the little lines coming through at the bottom and so forth? Ten Commandments. If you look at it, it's, a, it's the Ten Commandments there. You got the, you, let's see, you can see it better here. They got the picture. Okay. So, yes. If, and then, then you were so blessed that Miss Kimberly made all of these things for you all, and then he, uh, Brother Paulie, brought in some things. You can read it. Check me out. I might be wrong. <laughs> I just might be wrong. All right, now, thou shalt make a veil. And how high was the veil? Well, the badger skin was the 45. 42 feet high. How thick was the veil? Now, think about this. When Jesus rose from the dead, the Bible said he, from the top to the bottom, it was ripped in half. Well, you said how wide it was and how tall it was. You didn't say how thick it was. Well, that's thick as it went. Six feet. That's okay. Okay, then I didn't give the. I gave the height, the height, and it gave the, the width, six feet. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See, that's what I'm telling you. Thank you. So it did not give them the width, but you have to think. Some scholars say, and this is this is commentary. They say it was over six inches thick. Probably was. And you know how tough it is to tear six inches. So there had to be an angel. It was ripped from top to bottom, not from bottom to top. And that was the, that gave asset where that we don't have to go through all the ritual that they did. Matthew 27, 51, tell you that that's what happened. It was torn from top to bottom. Okay, now, 
so it was the sep thing that separated the holies of holies and it separated the holy place from the people entering in. All right, who want to read verse 32 through verse 37? <laughs> I can take my glasses off. Lord have mercy. We want me to start, Pastor? Uh, verse 32 through 37. Yes, sir. And thou shalt hang it on upon four pillars of shittim wood overlaid with gold. Their hooks shall be of gold upon the four sockets of silver. And thou shalt hang up the veil under the tatches that thou mayest bring in thither within the veil the ark of the testimony. And the veil shall divide unto you between the holy place and the most holy. And thou shalt put the mercy seat upon the ark of the testimony in the most holy place. And thou shalt set the, t the table without of the veil. And the candlestick over against the table on the side of the tabernacle towards the south. And thou shalt put the table on the north side. And thou shalt make a hanging for the door of the tent of blue and purple and scarlet and fine twine linen wrought with needlework. And thou shalt make for the hanging five pillars of shittim wood and overlay them with gold and their hooks shall be of gold, and thou shalt cast five sockets of brass for them. Okay. What do we say brass stand for? Judgment. 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 Why then, out of all the wood covered with gold, the divide the holy, holies of holies from the holy place, that they would have, he would have one place for five things of brass. Mm -hmm. Okay, why? <laughs> Somebody else? Yes, Miss there she go, Missionary Kimberly. Um the five is grace. Right. So. You on the right, you got you got that that's right. <laughs> so, he takes his grace that we don't have to be judged. Right, and that is good. Give her a hand. That's very oh, good. Woo, 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 woo. Okay, be, be, think about this. This is in the holies of holies. So I told you that the mercy seat, you couldn't see a seat because it was the what? Lid. Lid. And when God was some of them in, uh, in uh, either the high priest and Moses, would only somebody would go in. And the high priest would go in for the time of atonement. Mm -hmm. But God would summon Moses and, and, and Aaron in sometime to come in to talk with them. So God put his, his grace by the mercy seat so that when God gave the judgment of what he wanted them to do from the mercy seat between the cherubims, he, it was always with grace. I mean, we ought to be really thankful for that. That God just don't judge us like anybody else judge us. How many know if it wasn't for grace, most of us wouldn't be here? If God had gave us what we deserve, we wouldn't have been here. But he put grace there that when they come in, grace was already there and mercy was already there 
So he judged by his grace and his mercy. And he's still doing that today. So now I think you can see that the tabernacle, this is just a little fraction of, of what it is. That how God built a house that could be moved, could be moved at his will, and he was in the house because he wanted to dwell with us. His whole purpose with building a tabernacle, he wanted to dwell with us. And you know, that's, that's, that's a difficult thing because some of us is pretty hard to dwell with. Yes, sir. No, but you can get you can look it up in the commentary, and they they they, they will tell you how many times it was moved. And you know what? Sometimes it was moved twice a, uh, in a, in a week. Mm -hmm. But whenever God moved the cloud, they had to take the tabernacle to the to where the cloud was at. Right. And and that was no easy job. But yeah, because you can you, you gotta you gotta pack that unpack it a certain way. That's right. So you tell God, said, "What God? What are you doing? What do you mean? I got to get up this morning and move this over? And you def we just left last week." So what did I say? God is what? Immutable. He can do what he, he's a sovereign. He can do what he want to do. He don't have to ask our permission. So if the tabernacle would move, he, they seen the cloud was a four miles away or whatever, they just knew what they had to do. And if they were there two days, fine. Yes, sir, Deacon Jackson. I'm not being um, unthankful. Give, give What God had to do for us to be, for him to be able to have a communion with, with us. us. It was, I mean, he gave up so much mm -hmm. and all in that, but look what they had to do in order to do that. And I just look at this when Jesus says, take my, my yoke upon you. He says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Right. Look what they had to do right. compared to what we have to do. Right. And so, take my class you know, on Hebrews. Mm -hmm. On the book of Hebrew, you all take my class because that's the trans transliteration yeah. from the Old Testament to the New because it's the only New Testament book in the Old Testament. I mean, the only Old Testament book in the New Testament. I, I agree. And, and I, just, <laughs> I, I just thank God for what he did. I mean, look what he had to do just to bring us back. See, bring and God back. made his mind up with the Trinity before he even made man. This is what we're going to have to do. And he carried it through. That's and right. I just thank the Lord for it. All right. There's another question back there. Dr. Brown. Thank you, Deacon Jackson. That was a statement. It's, it's not really a question, Pastor, but it goes back to Genesis with Adam. God's original plan was always to be with us. Y'all forget this. this <laughs> it's not that hard. His plan was always to be with us. Amen. Always. That's the hermit. And he's man going back now. to his original plan. It's to be with his creation. And God had a plan within a plan to bring us back into that original position that he would dwell among his creation. And the same thing I said earlier that you will be my people as he told Israel and I will be your God. The same thing. It's the same kingdom he designed from the very beginning. It's the same kingdom he's now setting back up. We're going back to the original position. Yeah. Good statement. Amen. Give him a hand. We're just going to get all these smart people. Yeah. Anybody else have a comment or question? Are you learning anything? How many have ever studied the tabernacle before? That's Dr. Brown. Who else? I've studied it. Yeah, there's uh, Ella Vella. Who, who, who else, I said, has studied the tabernacle? I took the you took the class. And you forgot just about most of it, huh? Oh. Yeah. So if we get this, it will really bless you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It blesses you because the Holy Spirit is in everything from the entrance. David wrote about it so much, entering to his gate with thanksgiving. This is the gate. Enter to his courts, this is the court with what? This is the first thing you see is the what? The altar. The next thing you see is what? The labor. And the next thing you see is what? Holy place. The holy place. And in the holy place has got what? Uh, the candlestick. The candlestick. The table and the what? Uh, 
This was the altar of incense. Uh, yes. We're going to get to all of that. Then inside of here, you got the, uh, the, the holy, the, this is called the ark with the cherubims, the mercy seat. Inside of this ark was the showbread. Not the showbread. Inside of this was the mantle, the mantle, the rod that Aaron had that budded, and the Ten Commandments. All right. Good. Thank you all. Next week, the priest's clothe, or the priestly garment. There it is right here. Boy, this is, a, this is going to, this is what I would like for you all to understand as ministers and elders. There are some robes that you buy that you're not supposed to wear. Other people know what they are. You're buying something that just looked good on you and, and, and they, you bought it. But everything about this robe, including the tassels, including the fringes, including the, and you note that the priest doesn't have on any shoes. Why the priest, I, we, I wait, I, I'll let y'all bring that back. He have on no shoes. There's a reason. There's a reason. Not that he's walking on holy ground. <laughs> no, that's, 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 that, that's not it. But you will see what each piece. God 